Hey CCF, so uh, today as we bring up our Thursday night devotional, I'm excited to take you guys through the book of Colossians. And we're going to be looking at chapter 2, going through verses uh, 6 through 15. So I'm going to go ahead and read those, and then we're going to discuss a little about it in a short amount of time. So it says here, uh, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working God, who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. So what was the main purpose that Paul wrote uh, this letter to the Colossians. Well, very simply, there was two major reasons, and Shandy kind of talked about it um, a little bit last week. Um, the first one, the first reason is that he wanted them to know Christ more deeply. Okay, so Colossians 2, 2 through 3 said, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the first thing is he wanted the Colossians to know Christ more deeply. And not only that, but this kind of ties into the second reason why he wrote to them, is that he wanted them to be aware of false teachings, okay? He didn't want them to fall into any type of heresies or wrong beliefs about the gospel. And that's what it says here in Colossians 2, 4. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. And so this is kind of the major reason why Paul wrote the letter to the Colossians, and it's going to be a major reason um, that we talk about uh, chapter 2 here. And so I kind of want to break down this text into just three sections, three things that he doesn't want the Colossians to forget uh, when it comes to the gospel and false teaching. Number one, he doesn't want us to forget about a relationship with Christ. And that's what he talks about in verses six through seven. Number two, he doesn't want us to forget what false teaching looks like. And then number three, he doesn't want us to forget about our salvation in Christ. And so this is what the text is all about. These three things, things that we need to remember, realities that we need to reflect on when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, so with that first part, not forgetting about a relationship with Christ, Paul reminds him, he says, therefore, as you have received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Um, you were rooted, built up, and established in the faith. Not only that, but they were abounding in thanksgiving. So this is an encouragement letter. The Colossians doing a great job, and Paul's just reminding them, even though they're tracking well, Paul still wants to remind them about the gospel and the truth of their new life in Christ. Their foundation, everything that they live for is based on Christ. And this is really important when it comes up against false teaching and false beliefs because other false teaching beliefs will have a different foundation besides Christ. And that's exactly what Paul is trying to steer them away from. So he reminds them that you receive Christ and because you have received him and because you were taught him, don't forget about it. And so he tells them to walk in Christ. Not only do you need to know about who Christ is and remember that, but you need to practice it out. And so that's the first thing that Paul wanted to remind the Colossians is to remember their relationship with Christ and their thanksgiving. A really good indicator about whether or not you know if you're rooted in Christ is whether or not you're abounding in thanksgiving. Um, kind of like at the foundation of a building. If you look at the top of the ceiling and there's cracks, um, you know, the, the windows are starting to wilt and, you know, look like the, the roof is caving in. It's because the foundation is probably messed up, jacked up, or not even there. We don't know. But that's kind of the idea. If you're not abounding in Thanksgiving, that could be an indicator that your foundation is not in Christ. You're not as rooted and built up in him as much as you think. So that's the first thing that he talks about. So on a positive light, he's reminding us of our relationship with Christ. In a negative light, though, in verse 8, he's reminding us what false teaching looks like. What does he say here? He says, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. What are three things that characterize this false teaching? Number one, it's man-made, okay? It's handmade. In this sense, handmade is not a good thing. 
okay? In this case, it means that it's human-centered, okay? It's nothing divine about it. It's nothing that God taught. It's all man-made, okay? And so that's one indicator of false teaching. A second is what Paul says. It says it's according to the elemental spirits of the world. It's a demonic influence. It's an evil influence. Whenever something's not based in Christ or based in God's good design and order, it tends to lead to destruction. And that's why Paul is really adamant that all philosophies that are not centered in Christ is essentially demonic philosophy, dangerous philosophies and ideas that can lead us astray. And number three, it's antichrist. It's essentially against him. So like atheism, right? Or any other belief that says there is no God, Christ is not the answer, whether it's Buddhism or Islam, those are things that Paul says are false teaching, dangerous things. And so those are three ways to characterize false teaching. And he warns them. He wants, the, he wants the Colossians to know, hey, don't forget about what false teaching looks like because it is subtle and it will tend to infiltrate your worldview if you're not careful. And then the third point, which is verses 9 through 15, kind of the whole rest of the passage here, is that Paul doesn't want them to forget about their salvation, the way it looks like, their salvation in Christ. And he gets into a lot of specific details here when it comes to circumcision and baptism. He uses these two as illustrations of how Christ saved us. And I like what he says here. He says, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. If there's anything worth knowing, it's not found in other philosophies or false teachings or beliefs that are not of Christ. What he's saying is everything worth knowing is in Christ because all of God, okay, he is God, fully God in Christ. And then he reminds them that you've been filled in him. He represents you. And so this is what he's talking about when he goes in talking about circumcision and baptism. These are kind of uh, illustrations or metaphors of our new life in Christ. Um, when it came to Old Testament theology, uh, when the Israelites wanted to be entered in a covenant relation with God, they had to be circumcised. That was kind of the entryway or the ticket into this covenant relationship. Kind of like when you start a credit card and you got to pay a certain fee in, be, in order to be entered into that contract, contractual agreement. It's the same thing. Circumcision is that entryway. And then after that, you have these obligation of following the law. That's you know, the terms of agreement when you enter in a covenant relationship with God is that you have to be holy just as he is holy. Of course, we know that we are completely incapable of doing that. And so Christ becomes our representative. We're identified in Christ. That's why Paul emphasizes the in or the union with Christ, because that means that we're now able to be identified by Christ's righteous works. Okay. And so in this sense, he talks about how we've been spiritually circumcised, um, how it's a spiritual circumcision. It's a heart change. The flesh, the old ways, the old ideas, the old philosophies we believed in, they've been put off. And then not only that, but this circumcision is not accomplished by ourselves, but by God. And so that's kind of what he's talking about when it comes to circumcision. Okay, and the final illustration he uses is baptism, which is that uh, symbolic act in which we're, you know, buried in Christ, right? We die to self, and then Christ raises us up again in new life with a new heart. And in a spiritual way, that's basically saying that our old heart, our old flesh, right? The desires that are contrary to God have been killed and eliminated. And now we've been raised up with new desires and a new heart that enables us in growing measure to keep God's law. Because you got to remember, we first got to be able to enter into that covenant via spiritual circumcision, right? Putting off the old flesh, which is that death. And then we also need to be able to keep the law, right? Christ kept the law in perfect righteousness. And then he gives us a new heart and a new ability to start fulfilling those law. Uh, by loving others and by loving God in increasing measure. And so that's kind of the powerful thing about the gospel. And these are things that Paul spends time reflecting on. He gets into a little bit more deeper application in the next couple of weeks. And Nathaniel and Shandy will, will go into that even more. Uh, but what's important is that Paul spends a lot of time reflecting on these truths. Um, and I really like what John Owen, an old Puritan writer, once said. He said, our great hindrance in the Christian life is not our lack of effort, but our lack of acquaintedness with our privileges. In other words, it's because we fail to remember the privileges and the promises we have in God through Christ Jesus that so many times we fall into false teaching, we fall into sinful actions, and we namely forget our identity in Christ. And so I wanna encourage you guys, take time to reflect on the nature of your salvation, take time to reflect on the awesome relationship you have with Christ uh, because of his sacrifice and because of his love.
Um, and so that's all we got for this week. Uh, look forward to see you guys next week.